most everyone welcome to the charvak podcast this is your host kushal mehra so today we are going to be talking about the abhijit's journey uh, in uh, as far as weight loss is concerned but before before we start today's podcast i would like to openly admit that yes abhijit they have found you out you are far right because no, i have evidence right. i have evidence of how <laughs> i have evidence see you are far right because you are talking about fitness now and guess what the time magazine had written time yeah, magazine yeah so it had written that fitness is the new uh, bible of the far right it's a white supremacist origins of exercise and six other surprising facts oh, about the history of <laughs> what the hell man like serious <laughs> wankers next level wankers Yeah, so they, they caught you, Abhijit. You, yeah. You What can I say? I'm, I, I'm I'm completely exposed. Yes, and 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 the funny thing was in July 2023, the MSNBC had written an opinion piece and published an opinion piece. Why is the far right is really into home fitness? God, I mean, you know, it's like. <laughs> there is something to be said about uh, the mental health of these characters huh? yeah it, 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 it's 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 interesting that uh, you know we we why do they do this is like i i don't understand we're not going to discuss about the attack on you and because of whatever but i mean i had to talk about it because it was so funny and i was like oh yeah the articles had come now they have proven you're far right but it's okay so okay, tell me okay. Yeah. So now, obviously, today we are going to focus on your uh, journey to this particular Ayurvedic uh, naturopath. Would you call it a naturopathy uh, uh, resort, or what so, exactly no, would you call it? No, I am never going to call it a resort. It is a hospital. Okay. It's a very, very nice hospital, but it's an Ayurvedic hospital. Okay. Okay. So go take it over now. and i basically went there because i was researching and i found hey wow nice it's a resort uh no it really isn't in fact they filled in the pool specifically so that people would not think it is a resort so they filled it in and made it a lotus pond so that you would not go swim there uh what it uh, turns out is that they are a very very serious hospital uh they want to do things like you know traditionally what used to happen was even in sri lanka today which has the highest hdi in india you first go to a gp for a holistic a general practitioner for a holistic diagnosis and the gp then recommends you to certain specific things in india we don't value the gp at all mm-hmm. but in ayurveda one of the things was that everybody had to be a gp and then you could have specializations as well so here they look at you completely holistically okay so what happens is before you go when i found this place i was like yeah yeah this is going to be ayurvedic i'm just going there for the massages and things like that because it was two massages a day two treatments a day included in the uh, uh, package anyway so i rock up there and uh, uh, first before you rock up they have a 2 3 hour long consultation with you you have to fill in lots of forms because they want to know what exactly is it what are your priorities that you want sorted out what do you think is wrong with you then they themselves will tell you what they think is wrong with you and what all needs sorting out so for example there were little things so for example my obesity was linked to a bad case of skin dryness which i never realized which they realized immediately uh they realized that i had uh you know uh, uh uh an unhealthy bowel which i had never realized at any rate till i went there at any rate uh they realized a lot of things about this so when i went there you know the first two three days i was like a very nice place i mean gorgeous place if you go check out the photos i've put up of that place it's stunning uh i was like what the hell is this this isn't what i signed up for where's my thing happening etc etc boss they knew exactly what to do like all sorts of other issues that i've had you know things like for example there was this constant you know this thing you can't see it here but um you see this mark here this kind of darker skin this used to be much yes. darker it was constantly itchy there was itchiness all across my body uh and it was because my body was very dry and i never used to put oil because my face used to keep secreting oil so what they've done is 
they've sorted a lot of those issues out. The places that were too dry are now not dry anymore. The places that were too oily uh, was not something they could solve because they were more interested in solving the rest of the dryness of my body, which was much more problematic according to them. And that is done. The weight reduction now continues unabated. I'm losing two kilos per month since I got back pretty much. And that stays on track. Right. So, but what it helped me realize was the main thing was to focus on yourself. Be conscious of everything. Be conscious of every breath you're taking. Be conscious of every morsel that you're swallowing. Be conscious of every calorie that you're taking in. And, you know, that's a very good way of... Uh, Controlling your weight in a sense, but also solving your problems, being very conscious. You know, sometimes we just take ourselves for granted. We take our bodies for granted. And the focus was all put back on you. Focus on yourself, everything that you're doing. So they they make you count calories is what you're saying? No, Even in Ayurveda, they don't make you count calories. They don't make you count calories, but they, they make you conscious about everything that you're eating. Eat slowly. So, for example, we never sit in a round table chatting with people. There's no talking aloud while eating. You know, remember when we were kids, they always used to say, don't talk at the dinner table. Why was that? You're meant to focus on the food. They want you to focus on the food. They want you to focus on chewing. They want you to chew your food properly. Okay. Uh, so that because a lot of the food that we have, a lot of your digestive problems are caused by you not chewing and macerating the food properly. Right. So they want you to chew it. They want you to focus on the food. They want you to focus on every single thing you're eating. You're not doing calorie counting. But you're not going to be eating a TV meal, watching TV and gulping down as much as you want. You have to be very conscious about what your body is feeling as and when things go in. And that is fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, but what about uh, in terms of a diet? Like, uh, do they study your dietary patterns so, when you go there? So what they do is they do a lot of tests on you initially. And you're classified in one of four different categories as per Ayurveda. In those categories, you have foods that are good for you and foods that are not good for you. Okay, so it turns out meat is good for me. Some meats are good for me. Some meats are not good for me. Surprise, surprise, as a Bengali, fish is apparently not good for me, which I found quite surprising because I thought my natural metabolism would, but apparently my metabolism does not support the consumption of fish. But the thing was, primarily all my fat and this thing was being caused by a lack of attention to my food, number one, and number two, not eating any roughage and having my intestines cleaned out. So there's a huge accumulation of fat and meat going on in the stomach. So what they wanted to put me on was a high fiber diet, which would constantly be cleaning out my guts like a loofah sponge, right? There were other things I learned. So for example, you're never meant to have dahi in its gada form. You're always meant to water it down. For my body type, I'm not meant to have gada dahi. I'm meant to have watered down dahi. Yeah, chas. To chas le chas. Hai, and, you know, that tells you a lot why chach. I mean, people could have drunk dahi as it is, but why do people drink chach? See, this is why a lot of the old wisdom starts making sense. Garmi mein chach piyo. Indigestion hai to chach piyo. Har cheez ke liye chach piyo. Why? Because yogurt by itself does not calm your stomach down, but yogurt combined with water mixed a bit uh, uh, calms it down. So what's happened now is my entire kind of carb craving is gone. I'm on bamboo rice and Kerala red rice and Manipuri black rice and things like that. But I'm not uh, uh, really craving carbs anymore. Uh, meat, they scared me out of. My meat, um, and they're very good at this. Uh, they told me, look, meat is good for you, but have it in moderation. You can't just keep eating meat all day. Because that is half the problem of why your stomach is blocked and things like that. And your metabolism has slowed down so much that the food just stays in there and there's quiet. Sorry, my boy is going on keen. Uh, your metabolism has slowed down so completely that, you know, your uh, food is just lingering inside your stomach for too long and it's rotting in there. It's not good for you. It's not good for anybody out here. So what ended up happening was that uh, 
they found the only way to make me stop eating meat was to scare me about meat. And they did it very effectively. They told me, think of meat as sugar. Now, I do control my sugar intake. I don't control my meat intake, but I do control my sugar intake. And as far as my body is concerned, meat is sugar. Right? So every time I see meat, like, you know, how many people do you know who eat more than one ice cream? If you cornetto, you only eat that one cornetto. You don't binge through three, four cornettos. So look at meat as a cornetto in a sense so that you'll just eat one. And you won't start gorging on it. And it works perfectly. So every day there's one meat dish at home. It will be exactly this much. Like ek chota katori hota hai na? Utna hi hoga. But there are always six, seven other dishes which are uh, just pure fiber vegetable by itself. And you know, unlike... So, you know, one of the problems is they... they a lot of North Indians, for them, vegetarian is just paneer and aloo. Do you know how many Mishras, Tripathi, Shuklas and all Trivedis and Chaturvedis and uh, uh, Ikvedi and Dvivedis I know who are meant to be Brahmins and won't touch any vegetable other than potato and paneer? Okay, for them, potato and paneer are the only vegetables. Here, the number of vegetables I was exposed to. Thankfully, I love all vegetables. So all I'm doing these days is eating about my cook makes six, seven different vegetables and you're meant to control the spice and salt. Salt control is key. Spice control is key. But why? Why the spice? Salt, I understand. Why the spice? Achha. So so it's very simple. Spice may tum jitna spicy banaoge, utna zyada naan kaoge or utna zyada chawal kaoge. The mm. spice is what drives your consumption of both rice and bread. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, uh, if you have traditional old uh, low GI rices like uh, Kerala red rice or uh, northeastern black rice, they are going to release sugars very, very slowly. So it's fine. But what we get is polished, refined rice and maida and uh, even atta technically these days is maida. You, uh, atta should never be as soft. The kind of chapatis you produce should never be as soft. So we all know it's maida with a little bit of color added in there to make it look like atta. Okay. But spice increases your carb consumption and consumption of things that you don't need in your system. Right. And they had a fantastic chef out there who taught me to cook different things. I think the only thing he made which I did not like was this proso millet. Proso millet is something I've decided it's the only food that I know today that I absolutely find disgusting. But other than proso millet, I like everything else. And he also stopped giving me proso millet after he realized I found it disgusting. But he taught me how to maximize the flavors of those vegetables and eat properly. So they condition, it's, it's not a one size fits all. They have to figure out what your weak points are, where to attack them, how to attack them, and how to then mentally condition you so that you don't go back. Because, you know, the easiest thing to do is once you come out, is to go back to all your old food patterns and that entire 14 kilos lost would be gained back within two, three weeks of coming back out, right? So it was very, very carefully controlled. And their main focus is on preparing you for after your release. They're so good, they don't want you back. If you come back the next year, they view it as a failure on their part. I generally trust hospitals that don't want you coming back. As opposed to hospitals that keep telling you to come back. Yeah, sustainability is the, see, in my own experience, when I came down from 96 kilos, I had gone all the way down to 67. I'm never going to 67. That was just too skinny for me. I was not, I did not enjoy how I looked also at 67 kilos. I think for me, the ideal weight I want to stick is 70 to 72 kilos. That's about it. Maximum 75. That's where I hover around these days. But uh for me, the most important and the toughest aspect which people don't realize, and I want to ask you this, what do they say about sustaining weight? Because nobody for... See, everybody can lose weight once. Everybody yeah. does it. The problem is gaining it with a vengeance. Yeah. Now, that is more of a psychological issue, less of a yeah. habit issue. Yes. What do they 
teach uh, is there something in in this place in the program where they talk about the psychology of uh, binge eating how do you control your binge eating habits like i am very disciplined by nature abhi tu mere ko janta hai main bahut disciplined hu main sirf do bar khata hu din mein that's it i go cold turkey after that mm-hmm. tu mere saath tha ghar pe tu ne dekha main 16 ghante kuch touch hi nahi karta tha main kuch khata hi nahi tha yeah. but the yeah. point is most people that i see who fail uh, after their weight losses they can't sustain it so uske bare mein wo log what do they say that so see that sustainability is teaching you how to cook right the sustainability is you focusing through so we have three sessions of yoga in the morning you have the uh, proper yoga in the afternoon you have uh, what people know as proper yoga in the afternoon you have nidra yoga and in the evening you have pranayama hmm. so everything is based on you focusing on your own body the sustainability plan here is self awareness be aware of what you are eating be aware of what you are doing to your own body be aware of uh, how much you are eating where you are eating they don't have a concept of a cheat day per se but when i worked out my plan that i will have one cheat day they were like fine go ahead and have your one cheat day right so today is my cheat day uh, diet cook because uh, uh, basically cold water is banned a uh, cold water wreaks havoc with your metabolism people don't realize this you should only be drinking warm water warm or hot water uh but this is my one cheat okay uh then sometime uh next week i'll maybe have uh, uh you know some heavy sugar thing some big dessert or something that will be my second cheat uh so there'll always be one cheat or something every now and then which is fantastic but then uh this uh like w- water thing why why lukewarm water i did not understand that bit think of it as this your body uh i'm going to give you a body analogy and then i'm going to give you a cooking analogy okay your body is essentially burning up the acid in your stomach is burning up the food to extract the calories from it right mhm you drink cold water it's like pouring cold water in a pot that is frying okay. kya hoga usme the temperature comes down and the entire cooking tabah ho jata hai usme so okay. you literally it's slowing down your metabolism and it isn't allowing for an effective processing of the calories and therefore food gets stuck in your stomach and doesn't move out mm-hmm. the body is very fine tuned to consume calories rapidly and push the food out what you need is absorbed and then food is pushed out the more you keep drinking cold water the temperature brings down the chemical reaction ka heat and this thing absorption calorie absorption so you keep consuming more and more and more it will take longer like think about it if you're cooking something and you keep adding cold water or ice cubes to it your cooking is going to take a heck of a lot longer what okay. can be finished in 5 minutes will take 5 hours so it's basically the same thing uh but a lot more calorie extract which your body doesn't need because so basically room stuff. temperature water or lukewarm water is what they recommend lukewarm is better lukewarm is better uh best not to drink water immediately after eating because it dilutes the stomach juices but uh, uh generally just keep hot water to lukewarm water so okay so in this uh, in this place that you uh, went uh, Like what is the role of exercise? Like how do they look at uh, physical activity? Okay, I understand the bit of the diet, and we we can focus on the mm-hmm. diet and balancing out diets as per the Ayurvedic uh, principles. I I understand that, but what is the role of the physical activity? Because I uh, this is something right. so, a lot so of people don't talk activity, about. So physical activity is linked to each person, depending on who they are and what their metabolism is. right so even your yoga in the morning the nidra yoga and the pranayama are same for everyone but even the intensity of the yoga in the morning is calibrated to the person uh, uh, involved right so for example for others there was a very uh, uh, strict regime of exercise for me it was less because they knew from my history that i uh, you know after gaining weight all my attempts at early exercise had produced sprained wrists and sprained ankles and things like that 
So for me, the ex exercise was restricted to one hour of walking in the morning and one hour of walking in the evening. Right. But brisk walking. I was given a timetable at which to finish these many rounds. Okay. And then it's very easy walking because it's straight path. It's not like Delhi or Bombay footpath where you have to keep looking where you're going and you're not really paying attention to the exercise. You're paying more attention to avoiding poop on the streets and things like that. Right. So uh, it, it essentially it was like this. We would I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning because you have to take a bath and brush your teeth before your morning yoga. At 5.45 in the morning, yoga starts. At 6.30, breakfast starts. From, uh, say, 7 to 9, for me it was 7 to 8, I had to finish my rounds. Then at 8 o'clock was my first consultation, followed by my first treatment. Then I would get free time. Uh, and the treatment would last about two hours, so say till about 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 to 11.30 would be free. 11.30 would be uh, uh, yoga, nidra yoga. Then we would have lunch. Uh, and then at around 2 o'clock, you'd go for your second treatment. Uh, and then, which would again last about two hours. And then you will go for your evening yoga at 5.30, followed by dinner. Okay. Your day is kept jam-packed. You're never bored. You're always doing something or the other. You've only got about two hours of free time during the day. Right. And in the evening, it's lights out at about 9.30 maximum. So it's a very, very... It, huh? Yeah, you were so tired by it, boss. The amount of exercise you did without realizing it, it wasn't very taxing. Right. And once you get into this thing where you're seeing weight loss happening at such a rapid pace, it acts as a huge motivator as well. Hmm. So it's it's really, uh, uh, think about it. It's all very thought out. There's nothing here that's different from Western medicine and the way they think. No, I, I don't know about the cold water thing. I mean, I have read studies. Water, mein, yaar, Abhijit, I'm not convinced personally, but I'm not here to debate their claims or anything because it's fine. But I have so, not read any study that says cold water has a problem and adds adversely. Uh, any adversity when it comes to digestion. Honestly, uh, I have not uh, seen any study saying that. Mm. Except for me, what it's done is uh, nothing short of a miracle. I'm only drinking hot water these days. Uh, where I can't get hot water, then, you know, uh, room temperature water. But only hot water these days. It, it's literally cleared out my entire system. I used to have gas issues. I used to have all kinds of issues which are no longer happening anymore. My, uh, 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 sorry to use the word, but potty. Potty subay teak chai bajay ho jata hai. I can't sleep past 5.36. It, it's made my bowel movements regular. It's made my bowel movements very rapid and clean. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's really, I mean, there might be no scientific basis for it. But then how does it work so well? See, the, it could, I think, where I, my biggest grouse with the entire uh, Ayurvedic community has been their lack of double-blind uh, placebo-controlled study culture it is it is a huge grouse I have with them because personally I see a lot of value in many things Ayurveda recommends and uh, but it has to be tested on on the pedestal of uh, double blind placebo controlled studies but but I still believe that uh, a lot of things Ayurveda has to offer um, has a has sense sometimes in it in fact I mean uh, you know how I figured that out I was I read a very interesting book by a evolutionary guy called Randy Randolph Nessie. Randy Nessie ki a book padi thi, evolutionary medicine ke upar. And when I was reading that book of evolutionary medicine or how do design, how does one design a medicine itself based on the principles of evolution? I was like, and then I started reading like Ayurvedic principles in the panel. I was like, this makes a lot of sense. And Ayurveda also used to consider them. The problem is with Ayurveda, it is stuck in a time warp. They don't, they so refuse I'll to do you, new I'll research. Sure, fair. But here they do do new research. This is not a place that is uh, uh, antithetical to anything new. Right? Uh, this is uh, 
let me give you a simple example. I mean, I don't think you've found any, you know anybody more skeptical than me when it comes to atheists, right? But even me, the first skepticism, when you see the, without any medication, because the first three, four days, there was no medication. When you see the clear improvement in bowel movement and everything that the food and the water is having, for somebody who believes in the scientific principle of cause and effect, you have to accept that there's something to it. Right. Uh, and so in between, I'd gone to Israel for a few days where it was mostly meat. But just constantly drinking hot water kept my uh, uh, metabolism the exact same way it was. So I'm even seeing that even when I change my diet, as long as I stick to the hot water routine and uh, drinking copious quantities of water, but timing it for some time, uh, stopping water well before a meal and drinking it well after a meal is doing miracles with my bowel motion generally and with the weight. Uh, I don't know the science of it. Uh, it was explained to me somewhere, but I don't uh, remember all of it. But it is a cause-effect relationship, which in my case certainly seems to I agree with you. Warm water does help at times, even in hospitals when you are there, they do give you warm water at times. It is on specific subjects, on specific issues. It does work. I'm not denying that. In fact, at times even I've had warm water. Like I am completely on board with chas. I think chas is much better for digestion as someone who, you know, who has switched from dahi to chas. I used to be a dahi monster, then I became a chas monster. You remember when I was drinking chas at home? You saw it, I So, chas is definitely better. I have personally noticed it did help me with digestion. But the thing is, see, here's my problem with most Western Ayurvedic koi bhi hone de. And the problem, again, I'm linking it to the sustainability aspect and I want to know how you are going to manage it is, I'll tell you what problem is, look, then life happens. Having a discipline around what you eat, you eliminate. You can eliminate one or two things and add one or two things. No. No. So see, the secret here was making me think of meat as sugar. Okay. Uh, and reducing the salt and this thing. This is something I found even when I went out to Italy or recently to Amritsar, I could maintain uh, Israel, not Italy. And Amritsar, I found that I could maintain it. You know why? Because jab meat tha, mein bas itna sa leta tha. Sab se zyada har jage, I mean, vegetables you will get everywhere. Right? So, uh, at a five-star buffet when you're living in Taj Swarna, you'll always have uh, uh, vegetables for Gora people. So, you know, your steamed vegetables with very little butter and things like that, which is very easy to get wherever you go. Eat that. Chach to har jaga mil jata hai. Even in Israel and Europe, you get chach very easily. In Israel, they call it Iran, which is the uh, Turkish word for it. Uh, across the Mediterranean, now it's a big thing. So everybody drinks chach everywhere in Europe, pretty much. You find it very easily. It's called different things. It's called Iran or whatever. I, the Greeks have a different name for it. I don't know what. It's very easy to do it. It's not, I, I have not found it difficult so far. After two months, including one foreign trip and one local trip. So it's good if you've if you've not found it because um I in my and experience the big importantly, okay. importantly, uh -huh. uh, the flight I took, uh, and it was an official uh, sort of an engagement. So you know everything curated in a conference and whatever. Sticking to the diet there was easy. And just picking the right things off your meal tray was also very, very easy. Because aap dekhoge in an airline meal, it's one third, one third, one third. Uh, one third in that hot dish, one third meat, one third carb, one third veggie. Mm -hmm. You just eat the veggie and the starter ka salad. Bus. Nothing else. And it's shrunken my tummy massively. I'm not able to eat big quantities anymore. Yeah, that's very natural. Like I can't that's eat what natural. I used to before. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, like if I eat more than one 
this big katori of rice i literally feel bloated at the moment i feel i'm going to die hmm right it's almost like it's choking my stomach up yeah that so that, what that, then that. happened was so what happened was after these 3 days of first self realization they want you to realize through all the meditation and things can you feel what is wrong with your body can you feel the itchiness of your body because they didn't want me to use outside soap they only wanted me to use the soap that they provide which is very gentle on the skin so what are you feeling on your own body first okay how are you feeling are you feeling gassed up are you feeling full are you feeling light are you feeling hungry what is it check then they started giving me the medication for the purging of the intestinal tract so it started off with uh, a basic uh, ayurvedic medicine and uh, it started with 60 ml of ghee the next day it became 90 ml of ghee and finally it became 120 ml of ghee for two days and when you drink that amount of medicated ghee and this is proper ghee huh? this isn't the crap that you get the, uh, this ghee literally smells like butter dosa roast like bangalore mein jaake roast dosa khate hai na this ghee smells like that it's delicious apparently lots of people can't deal with the smell and can't swallow it i love ghee so uh, i could drink it boss it sends you to the toilet like that okay uh and it you are not able to eat anything that day but not in a bad way you're not feeling nauseous you're just feeling full right but what was particularly disturbing in all of that is almost 6 kilos i lost during the purging phase and there were things and for those 3 4 days i just couldn't eat anything not in a bad way because i wasn't feeling sick i wasn't feeling weak i was feeling super energetic uh in fact i was doing more exercise than normal more yoga than normal etc 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 uh and what was happening was there was more coming out of my intestines than i ever remember eating so the first 3 4 days the loss was of water from the system they were clearing out the water from the system because there were puffiness and bloating the next 4 5 days they were cleaning out the intestines because just in case you people don't know anywhere between 3 to 6 kilos of your body weight is crap that is stuck in your intestines literally crap that's stuck in your intestines which needs to come out okay and people don't realize that you know it's most of your intestines get stuck because you're eating so much of this multi cuisine all kinds of nonsense food drinking lots of cold water and coke with your food and things like that you're destroying all the natural systems of digestion we've developed over thousands of years so your stomach can cope with a diet change after about 3 4 generations but for you to be having italian in the morning thai in the afternoon chinese in the evening uh, south indian the next day assamese the day after that a paleo diet for a day after tomorrow's dinner then uh, uh, i don't know uh, south american food for the day after day after his breakfast your body can't cope with that right so they were basically uh, and i they focused me on just one kind of diet so even now like i am missing south indian food which i eat at my diet days but i've just standardized it on a basic north indian diet that my cook will know how to cook mm-hmm. uh and shall i bring you some of what i'm eating today and show you sure sure okay. yeah leke aa and ladies and gentlemen abhijit has gone he's bringing what he is eating today and uh, now we will know what he is eating today this is going to be very interesting and for you guys uh, who are watching this uh, on the video you are watching it but the audio walas i can guarantee you you will not hear this bit because the audio will be edited out but yeah let's see what abhijit gets and yeah by the time in the meantime abhijit comes like i i can share what i did i did nothing of this i did not go to any institute i went nowhere all i did was this whatever i used to eat i did not even change much of what i eat i just reduced the quantities 
and i was walking like a madman i used to walk every day for an hour and a half brisk walking like i used to walk at this my target used to be a pace of at least 6 kilometers an hour i used to walk 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 and i used to eat less and i lost all my weight and i keep doing my blood tests i don't follow any advice anywhere i'm fine my blood is fine my parameters are fine i don't have any deficiencies i have nothing and that's it that's all i did i just ate less walked more and that's about it i still do that i walk and now i have added only one thing in my um in my system or my routine that is i do intermittent fasting uh i don't eat anything for 16 hours there are days i don't eat i think three three or three times a week it becomes 18 hours sometimes 20 hours i just eat in a 6 hour period so i am whatever i eat it's going to be in a 6 hour period and that's it it i it doesn't matter what i have had but if i'm eating something it's in a 6 hour period and it ends there and after that i am just focused on not eating if i if there are occasions i feel hungry i just drink water i cheat my brain i confuse my brain i drink water i have seen it works like magic with me if you feel hungry you just have to drink water if you drink water it just works so well with me i feel satiated immediately if i drink water my brain feels satiated and abhijit is back so this is my dinner this is the actual portions of my dinner as well ha itna hi kha raha tu dekho okay now let me explain everything to you अबे अपना चेहरा हटा इस पे फोकस कर हां हां मैं तेरा ही कर रहा हूं भाई सो व्हाट यू आर सीइंग हियर इज इज बेसिकली अ कॉलीफ्लावर का भरता इट्स सो सिंपल यू जस्ट हीट अप मस्टर्ड ऑयल उसमें थोड़ा हींग डालो कॉलीफ्लावर कॉलीफ्लावर का पत्ता जो आता है प्लस हींग सॉल्ट एंड टू थ्री ग्रीन चिलीज यू कुक प्रेशर कुक इट फॉर लाइक टू व्हिसल्स एंड देन मैश इट अप ओके देन दिस इज अ पालक का रायता ओके दिस इज अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पालक बिकॉज हियर वी गेट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पालक सो आई यूजुअली पुट अ डिफरेंट ग्रीन लीफ एवरी डे मिक्स्ड इन विद अ बिट ऑफ दही वाटर डाउन दही इट्स एक्चुअली मिक्स्ड विद छाछ ओके एंड फाइनली दिस वन ऑफ कोर्स यू ऑल नो दिस इज बैंगन का भरता बट अगेन वेरी सिंपल देयर इज जीरो स्पाइस इन दिस देयर इज अ लिटरली जस्ट अबाउट अ क्वार्टर टीस्पून ऑफ चिल्ली पाउडर and very little salt and only tomato and onion nothing else no garlic no ginger no garam masala no nothing in there and this is the sum total of my dinner today so it's also reduced the size of my cravings uh i will maximum eat this once uh once a day is my normal because i'm not even feeling like eating much but if i'm feeling really hungry i'll peck on this they insist however that you cook food fresh every day because apparently leaving it overnight is tamsik so this is the cauliflower mash i don't think people realize how tasty simple mashed cauliflower is by itself this doesn't need garam masala it's it's just really simple straightforward stuff and it's delicious you know part of this whole thing of focusing on yourself is also to get in touch with flavors like i don't understand vegetarians who can't eat anything other than potato of course they cater to everybody uh, if you can only eat potato they will i guess they will make provisions to see to it you only get potato but so this place you went they obviously don't serve meat right they're all vegetarian oh god Strict no no. Uh, they don't care how much money you've spent. If they find meat on you, you'll get kicked out in no time at all. So let me put this back because I shouldn't be eating on a podcast. And I will come back and tell you about the entire history of this place and the whole. Um, it's run by Christians, uh, as in the owning family is Christian, and they are more fundamentalist Hindu than any Hindu I know. 
So okay. let me come back and tell you about that. Go. And Abhijit has left. And Abhijit will be back again. But yeah. So I am not making any scientific claims over here. This podcast was not about the science or anything. This podcast was about what Abhijit experienced. So before somebody was like, he has made this claim here. Science says this. Baba, I am not making any scientific claim over here. All I'm saying is weight loss is a very internalized and personalized process. What works for X in a weight loss program will not necessarily work for Y in a weight loss program. I did not go to any program and I lost all my weight by myself. I have sustained pretty much in and around that weight all by myself. I don't need any, uh, any resort to go or any hospital to go. I have done it all by myself. So it's not a big deal. But it was interesting because Abhijit had this journey and he was like, would you be interested? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to know what people do, man. It's it's always nice to hear experiences of people when they go to a certain place and they experience it. So, anyway, yeah. So what was I saying? Uh, let me finish this off quickly. And yeah. then we can go to Q&A. Because, look, you want to talk about the science, you have to go to the doctors out there and talk to them. Yeah. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're absolute miracle workers. Not miracle workers and they got me to lose weight, but miracle workers and they taught me how to sustain my weight loss and continue it after I got the hell out. There. Which is the most important thing. Bhai, Which is the most important water. thing. Yes. Right. In a way, understanding my lifestyle and telling me how to do, you know, they sat down for the last three, four days there was special counseling for an hour or so every day on how. They'd just be talking to you about your life uh, when you go back, how it is, how hectic it is and all of that. And they'll tell you, look, this is another way you can focus on this. This is another way you can prevent, you know, like if you have four or five meetings during the day. Okay. Uh, you will, for example, get uh, uh, samosas everywhere or biscuits or whatever everywhere. So just ask for black coffee or black tea wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just avoid the snacks completely. Mm -hmm. Just tell people you have a sugar problem so they won't even bring it uh, close. That simple. So it's it's easy stuff. But let's get back to this. So this is run by, so it's called Kalari Rasayana. It's uh, just north of Trivandrum. Uh, what happens is that there was this man called Vincent Joes. And he started up this uh, hotel called Casino. And what was happening in those days in Trivandrum Port, when the sailors would come, they thought everything was a gambling den, they'd ask for a casino. Now, there was no gambling allowed in India, but he set up a restaurant called Casino. And so when the locals, uh, which used to serve very good, typical Malu food. So when uh, the guys used to come and ask, when the sailors used to come and ask, where's the local casino? They'd say, oh, casino, casino, you go there. And then they would have gone there and they might as well eat and come. So it became very profitable. And then he turned it into a hotel slowly. Right. Then what happened was that when Rajiv Gandhi took the aircraft carrier on his holiday to the uh, uh, Lakshadweep Islands, he came up with a proposal to turn the Lakshadweep into Maldives, where each uh, island is given off to a hotel chain. But they wanted to do it a pilot project with only one at Bangaram Island. So this man, Vincent Joes, was the only one, uh, well, the Joes family at this point of time, were the only one to put in, in those days, an ecologically sustainable plan. That uh, after the lease expires, we will move, there will be nothing left, we will only train locals, we will only employ locals and things like that. So, you know, it was essentially like what India does in Africa as opposed to what China does in Africa. It wasn't a China and Africa plan. It was an India and Africa plan where you capacity build locals. You focus on sustainability and things like that. And that became a thing. Then he decided now the Maharaja of Palakkad, based somewhere out of Kolangod, is was a dear friend of my grandfather's. He had fallen on hard times and they wanted to sell off the um, the palace. Uh, in Kovilakam, uh, which is in Palakkad. So what happened in Kovilakam was they had very strict conditions. Everybody had come because it was such a beautiful property. The Taj Wallas came, Obrai Wallas came. But the family wouldn't sell it to anyone because there was the uh, Durga temple in the palace. 
uh, there were priests to be maintained out there. There were rituals to be maintained out there. And everything had to be maintained that way. No meat, no leather even allowed inside. Okay. So Mr. Joes was the first person to then agree to this. He agreed to it and he made it a resort that was going to be completely. So there, in fact, the Kovilakam one in Palakkad is even stricter. Here, at least you're allowed to bring your leather chappals inside. After that, you have to wear the local straw chappals and things. There, you're not even allowed to bring leather inside the compound. Okay, you have to take it off and leave it in the outhouse. You can't bring anything leather inside also. So it's very, very strict that way. And they came up with a business plan that it was going to be completely Ayurvedic, uh, completely Sattvic. So no onions and garlic allowed there either. For me, garlic is recommended in some cases. So in this particular place, I can have garlic, which is uh, Palari Rasayana, which is uh, north of Trivandrum. And, uh, you know, it that place, it didn't make a profit for the first three years. Then people started flocking to it because you're not flocking there as a resort. You're flocking there for curing. You have to be very serious about this. You go here when you are dead serious about this. Okay. And this one, the only relaxation that is given other than that is that you're allowed to bring leather into your room, but you're not allowed to bring it out outside. So chapel pen ke ajao, but no using the chapel within the uh, resort. Everything there begins with Asatoma Sadgamaya and Sahanaba. Okay, so the doctors are Christian, Muslim, whatever, but, but before every treatment, recitation is an absolute must. The Ganesha Puja is an absolute must. Okay, so this is uh, not a, uh, a, please stop thinking of this as a resort. They're dead serious about helping you through your problems. And they will tell you, if they can't solve your problem, they'll tell you in the consultation itself, Ki boss, don't come. Uh, and they won't take the money from you. And they're not interested. They feel that if you have to come back to them, they failed at their jobs. Okay. The very interesting thing was their kitchen. In the kitchen, for such a big place, they only have one fridge. Wo 200 liter ka fridge hota hai na? Uh, with a little freezer at the bottom and the fridge at the top. Only that. Because they do not have a cold store. That cold store is only meant for the dahi and for the butter, which they make out of dahi fresh every day, every week, apparently they make fresh butter out there for the key for treatment and all of that. Everything else, including all the food is there is organic. Even the honey, they have they've contracted it out. Everything comes from within five kilometers. They've contracted out a piece of land to be specifically developed for bees that they require to use in their honey. And you taste that honey. That honey is totally different from any other honey I've ever tasted anytime, anywhere. So you know it's completely organic. You go in the kitchen. There is nothing kept in the fridge for the next day. Because apparently keeping food overnight makes it tamsik. Right? So they get rid of all of that. Okay, this is interesting. So, I mean, see... Uh... It's a very interesting worldview that Ayurveda has. I, I personally would like a lot of these claims to be tested under uh, modern scientific principles also. And I think a lot of them might pass. Some of them might fail. Um, does that mean people should not practice it if it works for them? Absolutely not. I have always been a clear votary of as far as weight loss is concerned, listen, follow what works for you. And as long as your blood tests are fine and your health parameters are fine, you should do everything within your uh, your capacity. So if it's working for you, I should say you should do this. If it works, does not work for someone else, they should not do it. Like I didn't go to any place. I still lost weight. I still maintain my diet. I that's what works for me. But now let's start taking question. Mm. So did, so they, they, what did they say about fish? Not good? It's not good for me. There okay. are lots of people. See, because they're doing a complete determination of your body type. Okay. Okay. And they give you a complete list of what is good for you and what is not good for you. 99% of the things will be good for you. It's okay. just the quantities you take them in, how you process them. For, for example, gada dahi bilkul bhi khana chahiye. Okay. I should only be having water down. 50% water, 50%. Dahi is the ratio that I have been recommended. Okay. okay. What I found was I could never eat dahi as it is. And once it became charged, I find I'm consuming copious quantities of it, which is fantastic. Okay. 
सो फिश एंड छास प्लेन बोलते हैं कि वो मसाला छास और वो सब बोलते हैं मसाला डाल सकते हो दे दे डोंट माइंड मसाला छास छास में मसाला डालो पर नमक कंट्रोल रखो छास ओके ओके छास में वैसे भी कितना मसाला डालोगे यार मोर देन 1 तड़का स्पून फुल ऑफ से हींग और जीरा और समथिंग लाइक दैट हु इज गोना पुट दैट मच मसाला इनटू अ छास गॉट इट गॉट इट फिश इज नॉट गुड फॉर मी so i can okay. eat fish on a cheat day but i've been told to keep it down to uh once a week which i can do i mean it's not a big thing for me the main thing was mutton uh, as long as they didn't rule out the mutton i am perfectly fine but they screwed my life up in that they told me you think of mutton as you would think of a cornetto so i'm like before where i could polish off about almost a kilo of mutton at one sitting now i'm like eating like 100 grams one katori of mutton but it's very i'm feeling completely sated that's important okay so so this place must be expensive right what was yeah yeah it, yeah uh so the cost was around uh what 3 and a half 4 ish uh but it depends from person to person going it's it's a minimum 14 days that you have to spend out there they have 14 day programs and 21 day programs there is nothing under 14 days uh mostly they have a 90% rejection rate so you might think you have a problem but they might not think you have a problem or a problem that requires their special kind of attention so you have to call them up talk to them uh, have a serious conversation with them this is a serious consultation okay you can't be a hypochondriac who goes to fortis every evening and says doctor mereko cancer hua hai mereko please abhi inpatient kar dijiye and things like that like you know when politicians get arrested and they pretend they are getting a heart attack when apparently actually was just away from a heart attack that sel til bala ji or whatever in madras but anyway uh, you can't do that kind of tricks with them they'll know okay so they take only uh, this thing and yes yeah, I, i'm not saying it's cheap but the cost varies widely depending on what you're there for okay mine wasn't particularly high because it was a, a very straightforward thing there are other people that have very complex treatments going on where the cost was much higher okay so this is interesting so did, does this work what, what do you make of this best way to encourage weight loss is to offer tax benefits academic scholarships to healthy citizens don't punish fat folks reward healthy folks what do you think about that i think that's a fantastic idea boss i yeah, think if you're rewarding find... healthy people in a way you're punishing fat people na so the state can't yeah, do that no you're not punishing you're not punishing your you are factoring in the cost your cost to national health care if you are healthy your cost on national health care is uh, your burden the burden you impose on national health care is reduced and therefore you should be rewarded through tax benefits if you are so unhealthy lower premiums lower premiums stuff like lower that lower premiums uh, uh, uh lower tax rates because you obviously won't be using the health system as much as an unhealthy person will etc etc absolutely that's a fantastic idea i support it 100% but but it's a slippery slope because what if you have like a proper genetic disorder which there is no ilaj for so you know there are no, many no. exceptions so, so, so there there'll always be what if you have thyroid right wo yeah. wo wala thyroid that you gain absolutely. weight then then you but have see, that's not problems. that's not healthy you know we're talking about normal healthy people or not healthy okay as, as long as that so because i get very scared when government gets into all these things i don't like that's the true. idea of government government that's deciding true, but, what is unhealthy and healthy but, uh, first but of remember, all the a politician so itself second, is unhealthy second, one second one second see you do what uh, australia does which is government contributes 50% you only have private health care but government contributes contributes 50% you contribute 50% as long as you started it before you were 30 years old and then what you end up doing is that the insurance premiums that you pay for your health reduce significantly based on your health and worsen significantly based on a lack of health hmm. so what what did they did you try a keto diet or did they talk about a keto diet over there in the ayurveda place and did you study it so think of this almost as a keto diet uh, except kaise because there isn't much by way of carbs no The the indian food is full of carbs right now yeah but, yeah but mostly you're eating fresh green leafy vegetables and things like that your potato carrot beetroot potato i was never served not even one of the 14 days was i served potato uh you're mostly the only root vegetables i was served was carrot and beetroot uh and that's about it 
so mm-hmm. it's uh, and you know the thing is people don't in india don't realize that india has hundreds of vegetables that don't have carbs mm. you know? okay next okay okay next is uh, where do you buy authentic govind bhog rice to kya rice ka supplier hai kya uh, online but mostly i have it smuggled in from bangladesh oh my god <laughs> i i make a note of who are all going to bangladesh and i always tell them to get me 7 to 8 kilos because trust me we grow nothing in india like bangladeshi gobindo their gobindo bhog and chini guda they are yaar unka jo gobindo bhog if you put it just in water and start cooking it the whole house starts smelling of kheer as if you've added elaichi powder and what not and you're cooking kheer that is what a true gobindo bhog but even in good quality indian gobindo bhog that you get online will also smell like hot buttered popcorn not that that's concerned listen i have to run so let's go through the questions quickly hello dr yeah. please tell us where is blood produced in body i don't know best remedy for weight loss is eating paneer pizza for breakfast chicken biryani for lunch and shawarma for dinner fantastic all the stuff i don't eat best way to encourage weight loss is to offer tax benefits agreed what is the name of the center kalari rasayana uh, have you ever tried keto yes i we just spoken about it where to buy authentic gobindo bhog done uh why should we not not eat non vegetarian food in the month of sabar i don't know i honestly don't know uh, i i'm sure there was a good reason for it you know the reason behind not eating fish through the summer months has to do with the reproductive season you know they say in all the months the modern interpretation is the months with r if the month does not have an r in it you don't eat fish so it may june july august you don't eat because that is when the fish are reproducing so it's a sustainability practice now non vegetarian i don't think there's a reproduction season but there must have been something to do with post monsoon or monsoonal rot uh, remember things will rot a lot faster and get contaminated a lot faster in monsoon with water and things like that i suspect it had a lot to do with that dryness preserves but moisture kills remember that with meat and things like that and i think it had a lot to do with that rohan vyas abhijit and kushal can you guys please give vegetarian fast food joints sale mein health food ki baat kar raha hu aur tu restaurant sab ka pichhade mein bhool tera a i once said that dal must boil yes dal must not boil okay that is something that they also follow here uh, they soak it overnight so that it will be soft and then they cook it on simmer they do not pressure cook their dal at this place okay and the reason it it kills off all the interesting nutritious compounds it kills them off if you pressure cook it uh, uh, repeatedly so you cook it off pressure in simmer and it will happen like that as long as you remember to soak it okay so save yourself a lot of this thing don't be lazy i just soak the dal the previous night and cook it 15 20 second mein tumhara dal pak jayega mm-hmm. if you make your cooking please put recipe options yeah sure uh, what oil do you use in cooking uh, i use ghee mustard oil for all my north indian food uh, gingery oil which is to say unroasted sesame oil for all my south indian food uh, i can't deal with coconut oil except in one or two different dishes but um, yeah uh, that's mostly what i use and for when i cook chinese or something i'll use uh, groundnut oil the only unflavored oil that i use which is for salads and things like that salad dressing is rice bran oil it used to be called rape seed oil but then rape the word was very problematic so they turned it into rice bran oil mm-hmm. apparently rice bran oil i've heard is rape seed what used to be called rape seed oil and when we were taught that in school you all used to go <laughs> because you know indian school kids all dirty little perverts uh, ashutosh rao can you share more simple vegetable dishes that you have learned i love vegetables even veg restaurants may be have paneer choli and aloo yes ashutosh i will very shortly once the new house is ready to move in the first thing i intend to do when i move into the new house is start my own youtube cooking channel so you should all be praying for my new house to be delivered soon so that i can start my youtube cooking channel where i promise you 90% of my cooking is actually going to be vegetarian cooking which is mostly what i eat anyway even before this it wasn't just here it was very unhealthy vegetarian but now i'm making all my recipes healthy vegetarian 
So who is Johan Tegra? Do you follow him? Yes, I follow him. And I think he was very good in his criticism of COVID. He's called a conspiracy theorist. Sure, some of it is conspiracy. Some of it, invariably, conspiracy becomes reality. Uh, mm -hmm. What is their take on alcohol and its consumption? They don't like alcohol, but if you want to consume it, you can. Consume it in moderation, same with smoking. They would rather you did not at all. What is the assessment of low glycemic? Remember, there is no compulsion out here. The only compulsion is you can't bring meat into their compound. So that they're very strict about. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I will have to run now. Okay. Uh, so uh, what was second. their assessment no, 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 one of second, low? One second. One second. Yeah, okay. One second. Uh, wait a second. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, huh, sorry. So what was their assessment of low glycemic index substances like tapioca? So I don't know about tapioca because I was never served tapioca, but I was given a whole list of things. Then when I looked up tapioca, it is in the moderate category. Not to be consumed too much, but there's no harm in consuming it. Uh, but apparently the starch content in it is quite high, which is why it's kept in the moderate category. Uh, okay. So it's a uh, fine taken up. Um, I don't know how you're allowed to have dahi palak uh, uh, raita at night. Yeah, so a lot of people have this thing that you shouldn't have dahi at night and you can't have palak at night and all kinds of nonsense like that. Uh, I'm allowed to have it. So it's, um, uh, and I checked this. So I'm allowed to have it. It's that simple. I'm allowed to have that and poached fruits. So, yeah. Okay. So Abhiji, try Mai Tai Khair, the aroma of Chakhao. Okay, try Karlena. And uh, my, my okay. type here, what is my type here? I don't know. Ye is it hai. I don't know. Khir hai ye? Khir ki ye spelling hoti hai? K -E it it's should be e Let me a photo. I will find out from my friends what this is. Sister Abhijit, where is your Kala Tika? I hope koi aapko nazar na lage. Awesome poster. Thank you. The other PC name for rapeseed oil is canola oil, not rice bran. Achha. Rapeseed is very similar to mustard on steroids. Canada did tea, tea, the, the renaming. I anyway, I use rice bran oil. Uh, so just figure out what that is. Uh, I was told it was rapeseed, but clearly Poonam seems to disagree. Uh, I use rice bran oil. That is what I use. And I only use it for salad dressings or if somebody comes and says, Yar, I can't deal with mustard oil. Yar, tu, til ke tel mein paka ta hai. It's disgusting then I use that. Or they can't, there's so many people who can't stand the smell of ghee. So it's only in those cases that I use uh, this thing. Uh, okay. Rice Chal, I know you have to go. So we'll wrap it up again over here. Tu ja, chale ja. I will wrap things up and I will uh, do everything. Uh, uh, like I said, and I'll state it. अगर तूने दो साल अपना वजन सस्टेन किया, मैं दिल्ली फ्लाई करके आऊँगा और तुझे तेरे फेवरेट फाइव स्टार में हेल्दी खाना खिलाऊँगा. दो साल एक फाइव स्टार के लिए वो फाइव स्टार खाना का एक मील मैं पांच सेकंड में बना लेता हूँ पैसा <laughs> दो साल तेरे को, दो साल तेरे को वेट सस्टेन करना है ये तेरी और मेरी डील है अगर तूने दो साल ये वेट सस्टेन किया तो मैं तेरे को लेके जाऊंगा जहां पे तुझे लेके जाना नहीं तो नहीं दो साल दो साल यू हैव टू सस्टेन ओके इफ आई सस्टेन माई वेट लॉस फॉर टू ईयर्स he is going to take me on an all expenses paid trip oh, 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 oh. <laughs> to uh, to Seychelles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So remember, he's promised me this, and it constitutes a fiduciary <laughs> obligation. Please save this particular video clip because I will use it to sue him if he does not take me after two years. Thank you very much, Tata. Bye. Ja, bhi. Tu ja, tu ja, tu ja. All right, guys. We'll wrap today's discussion up as always. Please follow the Charvak podcast uh, on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Leave your comments in the comments section. Um, today's video was not about any scientific claims. Today's video was Abhijit wanted to talk about his experiences at this particular uh, Ayurvedic uh, treatment center or hospital or whatever so resort, whatever you guys want to call it. So once again, I am not making any scientific claims. In fact, I am very skeptical of many claims made in Ayurveda at a personal level. 
but i don't dismiss ayurveda as an epistemic framework like many people who are extremely anti ayurveda on social media are i actually have a lot of respect for the 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 under, underlying epistemology of ayurveda so i would always be open to anything that works like i said as far as weight loss is concerned everybody has to go through their own journey the psychological triggers are different different foods do different things for you so please keep supporting the charvak podcast if you are an audio only listener go and you know give a good rating on spotify itunes if you are on youtube you know the drill like subscribe leave a comment if you can this is a member driven podcast please become a member on youtube fanmo patreon wherever you are it does not matter or if you can buy the charvak podcast merchandise on kushalmehra.com or kadak merch or kuch nahi kar sakte to kushalmehra at icici mein upi donations de sakte ho i'll see you guys next time take care bye bye